Welcome everybody. It's Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. This is Drawing Together. My name is Scott Meyer. Drawing Together with Artist Network, where we meet every Wednesday to draw together because we're taking time to focus on developing our drawing skills. So I want to welcome everybody. If you're new, you're going to want to know that you can follow along by um, finding the reference image in the description below. Um, this is what we're working on, this fish. I, I realized after all of these drawings, it, I don't know as if I've ever really drawn a fish before. So this is a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to walk through the materials that we, we worked with. But um, again, if you're new, uh, the, the, the objective of this show is for us simply to get together and draw. And so you can follow along. I'm going to talk through the, the, the decisions that I make as an artist. Um, those of you who are watching, I'd like to hear your thoughts, your processes, questions, anything like that. So feel free to put it all out there and, um, and we'll see if we can you know, just help one another. So um, welcome everybody, it's great to see so many familiar names there. Um, let's see, I've got, I've got the chat open up here, so if you do have any questions, I'll be trying to monitor that. If you type them in all caps, it helps me to identify the questions and kind of separate them from the, the general chatter. Um, if, I, if you do ask a question and I don't get to it, um, please just type it in again so that I can uh, I can be sure to answer it because I, I sometimes I just I just miss everything. So, all right, materials today. I'm working on the toned paper, so I wanted to to use the white um, charcoal to help pull out some of the highlights. So I chose this this toned paper specifically to help help us kind of add to the kind of the drama of the scene, and it's just kind of fun to work with. So uh, I've got the Strathmore gray toned paper here. Um, I'm going to set this aside. All right, uh, a new uh, material that I haven't really worked with in the show a whole lot, but we worked on it at the art party as part of the giveaway from Jerry's is um, the Soho, this is the Urban Artist Sketch Squares. So I've got um, got one of these that I'm gonna be working with to help, it, it's really nice, rich, dark. And with the reference image, this one below me here, you can see how dark that upper portion gets. And so I think this is gonna work out really well. Um, just provides also a nice variety in terms of the mark making. Um, other materials, kind of some standard for what we use in this show for charcoal. I've got some vine charcoal that I'll be using to kind of lay out the drawing. Um, and then I've got, these are the Faber-Castell um, pit charcoal. So I've got a soft, uh, I've got a hard charcoal pencil, and then I have uh, the white, this is a General's pencil. It's a white um, white charcoal here. And I've got my, uh, this is a, an extender here. This is, again, it's part of that, that giveaway we had a couple weeks ago with Jerry's. So I've been using this quite a bit to make use of this pile of short stubs of, of pencils that I have lying around. So I'm glad I get to use all of those. Um, let's see, uh, erasers. I've got my rubber eraser kind of shaved down to this chisel tip to give me some precision. And I've got this accurate uh, um, electric eraser. This also came from Jerry's. Um, it's a lot of fun. We're going to be using that later on to help establish some of the details and the finer marks there. I've got my, rubber, my uh, kneaded eraser as well. It's a kind of a standard in the toolbox. And then finally, my blending stump. So a bit kind of a larger range of materials than sometimes we work with in the show. But um, if you don't have some of these if you're working with color pencil or graphite, anything else, go for it. It's, um, I, we kind of welcome a nice variety of approaches to drawing here. So um, again, welcome everybody. Um, let's get to it. All right, so what do I want to do? So when this, the first thing that comes to mind looking at this, I didn't spend as much time working on the proportions as I probably could have. Um, I was just so focused on kind of controlling the values and the textures that I, I kind of just moved forward with the proportions I established. So when I see these side by side, I can see the thumbnail and I can see the full size image. I can right away see there's issues with the scale um, and the, the proportions relative to the reference image. So I'm kind of bringing that up because in my mind, I feel like the drawing works as it is. Um, if I was a biologist and I studied fish, I might look at this and say, hey, something looks a little off. <laughs> you know, there might be something particular that it could be off. But um, so I, again, I'm kind of putting it out there so that it kind of frees you up to decide what works best for you. Is this, uh, is the reference image a starting off point? Is this something that your objective is about kind of capturing it as exactly as possible? I think what, what happens here is I, it ultimately kind of changed the angle a little bit. Um, and it, it, I think, like I said, I think it works as a drawing, but I might try to be a little bit more truthful to the proportions in the reference image today, just because, again, that's just something that 
I'm just making that decision for myself. Um, and it's not necessarily a statement of how drawings should or shouldn't be done. So, all right, got to get my head in the game. <laughs> And I'm kind of a little, little scattered right now, and that's what drawing helps me to achieve is a sense of focus. I've got to organize a little bit so I don't um, knock things off because that's happened before too. I get a kind of excited and some of these things just fly off the table. Um, so if you are following along, I love to hear how things are going as you go. So feel free to shout out the stage that you're at, where you might be stuck or um, pleasantly surprised by things. All right, so right now I'm actually working from that image that's right below me on your screen. Uh, that's the, it's a very small thumbnail for me. I have the full size image up on my left, and part of what led to the the uh, the uh, difference in proportions uh, before in, in my preparatory drawing was the fact that I was working from the larger reference image, and that was pulling me into those details too early. Um, and so sometimes w changing um, the scale of the reference can help you to um, take a kind of step back from the, the work and see it as a whole a little bit more effectively. So as I'm doing this, I'm actually, I'm keeping my eyes fixed on that reference image. Again, that one that's right below me on your screen. I'm fixating on that one and I'm allowing this drawing arm to simply react to the angles and the shapes that I'm observing. So as you see me make those marks, that's where I am in the reference image. I'm moving around fairly quickly and I'm relying on my peripheral vision. So I'm seeing the movement out of the corner of my eye on the paper uh, and that's helping me to uh, simply establish some of these early reference marks. We, we've talked about that in this show before. Is one of the skills that can be really helpful uh, when drawing is to, uh, to master the skill of the indirect gaze. Um, you know, so it, when you're, you might have your, your eyes locked in one location, but your awareness on action that's happening outside of that center of your vision. So um, I find that for me, I'm often actually more accurate with certain things in the periphery um, as compared to looking in the center of my vision. So right now I've, I'm, I'm really only glancing at the paper when I need to kind of double check my orientation. Am I, am I in relatively the right place on the page? Not uh, evaluating whether or not the, the fish looks correct at this point. I'm, I'm just doing a quick check in to make sure I'm not in some weird, wild place with regard to my uh, relationship on the page. So I'm trying to, like again, keep my focus on the reference as much as possible. Now, I introduced a tool last week with the portrait called the DaVinci Eye app. So it's an app on your phone that allows you to overlay the reference image on top of your drawing. So as you look through your phone, you're seeing your drawing and the reference image simultaneously and that helps to kind of double check proportions and it can break down the, the image in, in really interesting ways that can help you to see the abstract shapes, abstract values, those types of things. Um, and so if you have that, um, it, it can be a helpful tool for, for double checking things. Um, and I, I guess I, I don't really have a reason why I'm not using it. <laughs> right now, but um, yeah, I guess it, that's one of the, the, the things about tools is you're in control of when you use them and sometimes I, I just, I don't really don't feel like using it at this time, but I've, I found that I use it a lot more um, now. It's a pretty regular part of my, my process. Um, and so if you're, if you're kind of new, what uh, kind of what we generally or the process I generally um, just demonstrate is one by which we establish a gesture drawing first. So the gesture is all about your initial response to the subject with the goal of simply getting marks on the page. And sometimes those marks are just elegant and beautiful and you want to leave them. Sometimes they're just kind of clumsy and those are those kind of initial thoughts that you have to continue to work past in order to get to the refined marks um, but I, I liken it to um, the, the process for putting together, say, a jigsaw puzzle where you're just pouring pieces out on the table. 
So we're just putting, we're putting marks on the page, we're putting pieces on the page that we're then going to move around and adjust as we gather information about the subject. So my understanding of the subject right now is very surface level. I've glanced at it and I know that it's a fish. My brain has done a lot of problem solving for me. And so through the, throughout the drawing process, I will be kind of evaluating that whole process. How did I understand that this is a fish so quickly? What did my brain do to come to that conclusion? Um, and there's a, you know, a million little decisions and observations that the brain is processing in order to understand in that instant that this is a fish, a, a trout to be specific. Um, and so um, the drawing process is a way to help connect with, with the brain in that way. And so because I haven't come to a, a, a deep realization about the subtle um, qualities and the unique qualities of this subject, um, my drawing reflects that. Uh, so if I had, if I put pressure on myself right now to be 100% accurate with my marks, it would be really overwhelming um, in part, in large part, because I just haven't had time to really sit with the subject. And I've, I've already drawn this before. I have that benefit, and many of you have not worked from this specific image. And so um, I'm say that mostly to be kind to yourself early on, kind of abandon any sort of expectation that these early marks should be accurate. Sometimes you get lucky and they, they work out. Um, but many times they're not. That's not the goal in the early stages is to make it 100% accurate. Um, and then as we go through, we're going to gradually refine the drawing. Um, so with the, with the gesture established, the way you can kind of refine the work is um, by now shifting your attention to the proportions. Um, I'm trying to block in these shapes so that I see them as shapes versus lines. I have some lines on here that represent the edge of the fish, but I'm also trying to see them as a collection of abstract shapes. There's this kind of dark form over here, and I'm trying not to think about it as, as drawing a fish, drawing rocks, etc. Um, I'm trying to keep my, my brain focused on not thinking too hard and just simply kind of relaxing and observing shapes, lines, values, textures, all of those fundamentals of art that we often learn when we're younger. So um, welcome, everybody. I love seeing where everybody is viewing from. <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts of this whole show is we have people from all over the world. It's the coolest thing. And I, I'm very honored that, um, uh, that you are all taking time to, to participate in this drawing adventure that we've all created here. So um, part of what a gesture also does is it, it simply connects me to the materials and to get, get me moving, loosened up, because my brain has been focused on all these other things throughout the day. Drawing is, is something that's different, it's unique, um, and I can feel the shift happening in my brain right now, and it's exciting. Um, and so sometimes you just need a, a bit of a warm up. And that's where I'm at right now. Um, so other tools at this point, squinting is really helpful. So or blurring your vision in some way. So actually, I mean, when I'm looking at you right now, everything is out of focus. And I mean, I don't know look like it because I'm this small little rectangle on your screen. But the I'm l intentionally letting my eyes just relax and lose focus so everything is blurred. And then you can practice squinting your eyes to limit the amount of light that's entering. Practice widening your eyes to, to flood it with light. And, and do that as you're observing the subject and see how it changes. What stands out, what disappears when you make those changes. But I would say 75% or more of the entire drawing process is completed with me just simply letting my eyes lose focus. So even when I'm looking at the drawing, um, I, I'm doing it without really being um, in focus. So sometimes it can feel weird because it feels like I'm making kind of weird scrunchy faces, but um, that is just kind of part of the process of, of trying to really understand the subject from as many different uh, ways as possible. Um, So part of this drawing process is also connecting to 
kind of our, our vision, our, that, that, that sense, the entire system that forms our visual processing system. So, all right. Now, moving my eyes back and forth to see if anything kind of stands out. This is one of those really cool features on that DaVinci I app, the strobe feature. You can actually, it'll, you'll see the reference image in your drawing, but if you use the strobe feature, the drawing comes in and it comes out. It's just like if you, if you had a reference image going like this, back and forth, to see what, what stands out as needing to be corrected or adjusted. It's a really cool thing. So I'm kind of doing that right now. Uh, I'm just kind of moving my eyes back and forth to see if anything stands out majorly. Um, one of the things that's happening right now, though, it's difficult, is that I don't have the major value relationships established. Uh, so I'm going to actually bring in this uh, this urban this this. I want to make sure I call it correctly. It's, these, this is the Soho Urban Artist, uh, the sketch squares. Really like it. Nice soft material, um, and it works really well with their um, their toned sketch pads. What I have right now is a little bit too small, but I'm hopefully going to get some larger sketch uh, pads that are toned. Now, the, you can see the tooth of the paper. This is just really just using the weight of the, uh, the weight of the material, allowing that tooth to show up. And I think for, you know, for this, I want to be a little bit kind of looser and, and I kind of open myself up to the idea that some of these abstract marks could be interesting in the end. Now, you can see as I'm doing this, I'm kind of starting from the center of that area, working my way up to the edge. So as I get closer to the edge, I'm starting to be a little bit more critical about where I am with, with regards to my marks. And so um, I, I have some initial marks established, but I don't want to trust that they're correct at this point. Um, now that I'm starting to see this as a larger, darker mass, it may influence how I interpret some of these proportions. Um, and as I'm going through now, I can do, um, I can use some of the other tools that we've learned throughout this series, which is uh, primarily angle sighting, which is one that I use all the time now. So what I'm, all that is, is really comparing an angle in a particular area of your reference or your subject. If you're working from life, if you're working from a photograph, <clears throat> you can use the same same processes. If, if you have the opportunity to work to work from life, that's always the best. <clears throat> uh, you're going to learn um, the most. It's going to give you the greatest opportunity for growth if you can work from life. But that's not always possible, especially with a subject like this. And so, um, but we can apply these tools. Um, you know, from, again, from observational drawing, from life. Um, as well as to working from a photograph. Uh, angle sighting is comparing the angle of a particular area to that of the, in your drawing. And so if I'm looking at the back of this fin back here, for example, I can close one eye, align it with this, this fin on the reference photo, find that target, lock my wrist, carry it across, and compare it to uh, the reference photo. I mean, sorry, to compare the reference photo to the drawing there. Um, and see if anything kind of stands out. Right now, this I need to actually shift hands because when I bring it across, then my hand gets in the way and I can't see my drawing. So it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, all right. All right, so I feel like these, these first angles that I got were generally correct. But I'm going to keep things really kind of light as I get up to that edge. Uh, I, I don't want to have a heavy hand here because I'm not 100% sure that I, I'm going to have those proportions placed correctly and I might need to adjust it. So everything is really kind of soft at this point and we're going to, we're going to move through this process of gradually refining, bringing in a, a greater deal of refinement in select areas to, um, to pull the drawing together. So again, my eyes are blurred out of focus, simply reacting to the form. So and now that I have this as a mass, I can see that there's, there's going to be some, I'm going to need some work on this area. So I'm just kind of making that mental note, putting a pin in it, and then I'll, I'll come back to it. Um, so again, I'm looking at the reference image at this point. That's where my, 
where I'm at right now kind of keeping my eyes in the periphery. I'm looking at the screen, so I, I see it in front of me, I see what you're seeing right now. So the small reference image next to the large drawing, and I'm paying attention to what's happening on that screen out of my periphery as I, as I stay fixed on the reference. And then just glancing down at the paper, just to kind of double check, kind of re keep myself oriented to the paper. And I'm using the side of the block, the whole block. This is you know, several inches long um, and to, to kind of block in these areas, fill in these areas. And you can play around with the, the pressure. You know, it's mostly using the weight of the block. But I can kind of lean in on it a little bit if I don't want a, a huge, wide swath of value established, to be established, though. So. All right, so how's everybody doing? All right, Mad Mamas Go, I can't wait to see your work. I love seeing it. so many, I have not had a chance to respond to everybody who posted their portraits of Britain on the, uh, on the Artist Network site. Those are amazing. You guys did an amazing job <laughs> with those. Um, and so I, I'm really looking forward to getting, getting in there and, and responding to everybody who posted. Um, well done. Portraits are tricky, and I think you did a great job. Uh, so, kudos to you. Now, the other thing that I have to keep in mind is that this is gray tone paper, and I'm reminding myself because I keep, my, I can feel my brain working against that and forgetting that it's gray and, and actually thinking of it as white. This is, our brain does tricky things to us all the time, um, and one of them is is kind of calibrating itself to value relationships. Um, all, right. all right, so I feel like as a whole now, you know, this, this is basically aligns with how I, I observe the reference image when, you know, I'm with my eyes very extremely blurred. Um, I'm gonna use the side of my pinky, it's a little less oily. I shouldn't be using my hand, so should be using a paper towel or something, just to prevent the oils um, from affecting the paper, which the, can then affect the uh, the drawing. So now that this is kind of loaded, you can do a little bit of drawing with it. Um, one thing that I'm kind of coming to understand as I, as I work through this is that um, I'm going to, I really want to pay attention to the structure of the fish as we get through it. So um, I, I know some of, some of you may work in a way where you build up kind of an armature for the drawing, kind of work in a line and build a kind of a three-dimensional kind of cylindrical form that you then adjust and mold almost like it's a sculpture and then you gradually build the light and the texture on top of it. Um, so that may be a way that you work. I, I don't. I mean, I think it's important to pay attention to, to form and make it appear three-dimensional when you're setting a three-dimensional object. Um, but the, the point at which you bring that into, into play in your drawing may vary. Some of you may like to bring that in up front and really focus, again, like on a three-dimensional armature that you then layer the shading into. I like to kind of flip it, think about the shapes of light and shadow, and then start to bring my marks in to help reinforce that three-dimensional structure. So um, as long as at some point in the drawing process you're considering those things. And if you decide you want it to be kind of graphic and flat, um, two-dimensional, then that's awesome too, as long as it's an intentional decision that you're making. But for me, there's something about that that three-dimensional form of the fish in the water that I really want to capture. And in part because I can see in the reference photo there's this ridge of light uh, along this form and then it forms this flat kind of face along its side. It angles up at the top and then kind of rounds around the side. Um, those, those, those are some of the observations that initially I, I wasn't really aware of. And again, through the drawing process, it helps slow that observation, um, that process down and, and now I start to really kind of engage with some of those things that are really interesting that 
if I had just kind of settled on a cursory understanding of the fish, I wouldn't really not have that opportunity to appreciate fully. So, um, hello everybody. No questions. This is awesome. Um, yeah, I. Ooh, if you have anybody in Hawaii, I hope. Hope that fire's all right in California. Here in Colorado, we're getting a lot of smoke from California, and it makes me feel um, worried for those who might be impacted. We had those big fires in Colorado last year, and not fun. So, all right. What do I want to do now? Let's see. Now, I think I need to <laughs> make, come up with a plan. Where am I, where do I need it the most? I think for me, this line here is really going to be critical. So I want to get that incorrectly. And so I'm going to um, kind of work along that back edge using my eraser. Try to refine that form. Bring out this this block here. I mean, you can get a fair amount of detail using a big block like this. Um, so I'm going to see how far I can push that. Now, now what happens is that now I have is I establish this angle in this angle. Um, it's giving me a, a point of reference. Uh, that I can use to can help control the proportions. So as I lock, as I lock this back fin in in terms of its scale. Now I've now we've established kind of proportions in the drawing that need to be consistent with the rest of the form. So I can I can start to visualize where this the back fin is, it's kind of wrapping around. Um, and we have this really interesting abstract form here. Uh, I'm going to look at the negative space in here to help me establish that. Uh, and what I can feel myself doing right now is I understand that that's the, the, the tail of a fish. And in my mind, I have, I have like a really kind of a simple kind of symbol for that, that tail. I want to make like this, I don't know, kind of crescent like form. But because of the, the angle of that tail relative to us, because it's curving away, I don't see the back side of it. It's really kind of a, it's just this thin kind of vertical line. Uh, it's hard to really identify to put words to that form. So I'm trying to see it as an abstract shape. And I need to override that part of me that wants to draw the tail of a fi the fish the way I, I drew it when I was younger. And you just kind of draw these kind of simple fish forms. Um, I don't know if that's something that any of you kind of confront, but I know for me that that's, uh, that's coming into play right now. Um, so right now it's just like this weird abstract form that doesn't really look like much, but I'm going to trust it. And then we'll continually refine it. And hopefully, as the, sh the form of the fish comes together, that shape will make more sense. We don't have to, we don't have to scream out loud that that's a fish tail and make it explicit and, and kind of forget to look at the form. Um, we, it's, when we need to trust that when we get everything in place, we observe these abstract shapes, and we'll be able to look at it, and our brain will understand really what, what it is we're looking at. Um, Aaron Bell is asking, do I ever do colored pencils? I've worked with them, and they're very hard. <laughs> so I have a lot of respect for people who work in colored pencil, because that is a challenging medium. And I, I'm going to continue to practice it. Um, haven't really demonstrated it here in the show, just because I don't feel like at this point I can contribute anything that's helpful. Um, so. I, I worry that I would just ultimately be more confusing to people. Um, and it also, it's a very slow medium. Um, 
Um, so as you can see, I like to I like to push material around, and it's really hard to do that in colored pencil. So um, I don't do much with colored pencil, um, especially for the show. But I'm it's one that is a, it is a medium again that I want to continue to to practice with. All right, so I'm just giving myself self a little bit of uh, some notes here about this fin. And then I'm going to come across, and there's this fin here. And what I need to do is, before I really capture that and start to put those marks in place, I need to do a quick check-in with some of these other features um, to see where I am, uh, that make sure that I'm in the right spot, essentially. So if I drop a line down here, a plumb line, the tail, this tail fin here um, originates just to the left of that line, so right right about here. Now if I come across, I can see where a horizontal guide would intersect that fin. And the way I have it indicated right now is that that intersection point is, is fairly high on this, this fin here. So now I have to ask myself, is this too low or is this too high? Um, and my I think my general observation at this point is that this needs to come up. So if, if the tail, let's see if the tail is here and I come across, let's see, keep that straight, compare that to the reference, then the top of the fin here should come up to right about here. So earlier, when I put those marks in there, I referred to them as notes because it's, yeah, it's kind of like this, like putting a sticky note on there. So I'm just going to tack this here, and then I'm going to move it around. But I need, to, I need to put it somewhere for a little while. And so now if we come across here and I bring a horizontal guide across, it intersects that, that fin here about midway, which seems to be more appropriate to the reference image. Um, so now if I have that kind of point here at which that back fin originates from the belly, I can come in under here and I can find this point down in here. And I see in the reference photo, if I look here at the reference photo but put my awareness on this fin over here, this is noticeably lower. So this fin might come up a little bit. And if that point is down here, that feels about correct. And I can also orient myself relative to this, so I can draw a plumb line up through here to see where that point is relative to this upper fin. And that, that feels like it's just about right. And this is a bit of kind of a, kind of a triangular form. And now that's created some negative space in here before I, I interact with this other fin back here, or whatever that is back there. Um, and that, looking at that negative space, it feels pretty close to what I'm observing in the reference photo. And I come up here, there's a negative space here, there's a distance that leads me up to this back shape here for the back fin, and that feels pretty good. So um, kind of using kind of logic and emotion and feeling at the same time, asking myself, how does this feel? Does it, um, but taking a logical process from one step to the other, but doing a quick check-in to make sure that as I move along the, the contour of the fish, that these landmarks that I'm establishing are, are, are considered in relationship to one another, if that makes sense. Um, oh, Mad Mama's Ghost saying, I like using colored pencils, saves time mixing paint. Ha, I, I like, see for me, mixing the paint, that's the fun part. You know, spending an hour trying to get that right, the right one is tricky. LA for Dreams, welcome back, Massachusetts. Um, and, oh, and then Aaron is saying, so it would be what you're using be more like pastel if you wanted to do color. Yes, I love working with pastel uh, for exactly that reason. It allows me to work with color in a, in a process that's very consistent with how I push charcoal around. So um, I, I, def I love that. And what I love about pastel is that it, it helps inform my oil painting and the color mixing because it forces me to make a decision about hue, value, and saturation by picking amongst other colors. And sometimes it helps me to, to see colors in a, in a new way. 
if you've never worked with um, soft pastels, I I highly recommend um, getting a set, uh, going to have a nice introductory set to get a feel for it. Um, I know Johannes does um, his paint alongs with us, and he does uh, he does demos in watercolor oils as well as pastel, and it's it can kind of be a great way to. I love crossing over media to see what one um, does for the other, how one informs the other. So, um, let's see. All right. Again, if you if you're new, um, this is this is all drawing together. Um, so the idea is that we're, you know, some of you like to just kind of sit back and watch and then draw later. This goes up as a recording, um, but I, I really like to hear your questions um, about drawing, about art, um, about I don't know anything related to this. Uh, and you know, as a, as a community, we can all help each other kind of grow and improve. So um, feel free to throw your questions out there. OK, now I'm going to working up along the, the profile edge of the fish. As I'm doing that, I'm trying to be very mindful of the lines I created. You can see that I established a line to help define the um, that at that edge, but I'm very quickly then kind of feathering that out into that background uh, because I really want to create that rounded quality, that three-dimensional quality. And I know that if I create a hard line right now, I'm going to have to fight against that if I want to create that depth. And so if, if I create a softer edge now, it's going to help me later on. Okay, so now I've, I've kind of refined that but it doesn't look correct to me. <laughs> um, I need to continue to do some angle sighting. It's right in here that something feels off. Now, one of the things that's really helpful for me, again, is that in front of me, what I'm looking at is the screen that you're seeing. So I'm seeing my reference, or my, my, my drawing, I'm sorry, um, vertically and a little bit smaller. It helps me to step back from the work. When I'm looking at this one here in person, it's it is I'm, I'm getting a different uh, observation about that. I'm getting a, I'm looking at it from a different angle. My brain is correcting for the proportion, and so this looks incorrect to me from this perspective. But when I look up, it looks far more correct. <laughs> so um, I'm putting that out there because I think it's really really critical, especially early on, to establish that as part of your um, habit to step back from the work and really really observe those things. Change your relationship to the drawing to help you become aware of some of the things that you, you may be um, kind of just become comfortable to in the drawing. Um, and Ellie for Dreams, I love pastel pencil over watercolor. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I've never done that, but I've seen some amazing work. I know Johannes does that. He'll bring pan pastels into his watercolors. I think it's a great thing. Um, Diane B13, kind of a silly question, but can you take two kneaded erasers and form one bigger one? You absolutely can, and that's not a silly question. <laughs> I don't know as if I've ever done that, though, but I don't see why you wouldn't. There may be a difference between brands that could impact that. So if you're mixing kneaded erasers by two different brands, that, that may be a little challenging because there can be some subtle variations between manufacturers. Um, but if, you, if you're working within the same, uh, that same manufacturer, then I don't, I don't see why not. Um, and if you do it and it doesn't work, that would be awesome if you let us know. Um, Uh, so now with this, these rocks on the bottom, I'm kind of shifting to this part here, um, mostly at this point because I just need to clear my head a little bit. There's a little less at stake with, with these forms here. Um, and I just need to kind of step away from the form of the fish for a little bit. So I might work up in this area for a little bit, um, you know, work down on the rocks. And I'm working with the stick quite a bit longer than I kind of had intended. Um, uh, and I'm actually I'm really kind of enjoying it. I need to I need to work with a stick like this a bit more regularly. <laughs> I like it, um, in part because it just kind of forces 
it forces me out of the the um, desire to create kind of fine detail early on. Uh, and what we do here in the show is distinguish between kind of refinement and detail. And I, I keep I'm kind of saying that for myself is that I want to keep in my mind that my goal is refinement, not detail. Detail is not a thing that I want to kind of add as a layer on top of the drawing. I want to build the whole drawing up and be in control of where I bring greater refinement and that those details, the, the finer qualities of the fish will be, emerge through that where I'm selective about which, uh, which areas I refine. Um, but for me, again, I, I, I kind of have to keep that in my mind because um, it, it generally works against me when I, when I get into thinking about detail and I start to get obsessed with the detail. Um, and so I'm kind of doing a mental trick for myself to um, keep that focus. Uh, I don't know if any of you have kind of mental tricks that you play on yourself, um, but that's, that's one of them. I'd love to hear which ones that you use. All right, I'm going to put this away for now, bring out my eraser. Now I'm going to kind of refine this bottom edge here. I want to make sure first that that general angle along here is correct. So closing one eye, aligning this eraser here with that over the reference. And that actually, yeah, that, I'm surprised. It feels better than I thought. Uh, there's this rock in here that um, is fairly light. And what I like about that is it allows me to um, utilize a, kind of a fluctuating uh, value relationship along this edge. So here I have lighter value against one that's darker. As we move down here, um, they, this starts to become a little bit lighter here, but not quite as much. There's a shift in relationship between the fish and the background. And as we come down in here, we get this white stripe here that then reverses that relationship where now this is lighter than this. Um, that value relationship it can become really helpful when you're trying to create a three-dimensional form. We're looking at those edges and we're trying to create variation along those edges. That's what's ultimately going to bring this to life. Now, that's, that's uh, one of the reasons why using a contour line to indicate the outer edge of the form of the fish, why that can work against a three-dimensional form is because that equalizes that relationship a bit more. So if you're going for a sense of realism, you want to limit the amount of contour lines you're using. If you're, now that's not to say that contour lines are bad, you know, they, we use them selectively, um, but it's a, it's a choice that you make as an artist uh, when you need to enhance an edge um, and you're clear on what your objective is. And so if you're going for a sense of expression or stylism or something like that, a contour line might be entirely appropriate. If your goal is to try to make it as realistic as possible or look as realistic as possible, then yeah, just kind of take a look at how you're using contour lines in your work and ask yourself, is that really helping to create that three-dimensional form? Because uh, what we're, we're trying to do, he, what I'm trying to do here is try to create that sense that this this is a three-dimensional form floating in this, the space of the water here. Um, so I'm intentionally trying to be very selective about where I'm using line along the contour of the fish. Yeah, it's, um, I, gotta trust, I gotta trust the screen in front of me because I look down here and that looks totally wrong, those marks that I make. But it looks right when I'm up here, so I need to go with it. Um, so now I'm, I'm observing there's this kind of offset line here. I need to bring that up to the edge. All right. Colleen says, mine looks like a carp right now. I don't know what a carp looks like. I, am, uh, I feel a certain amount of shame and embarrassment. I grew up along the coast of Maine, and I know very little about fish. <laughs> I feel like it's something I should know. I feel like it should be in my bones in some way, but I don't. I, you know, I've certainly gone fishing and stuff, but... Um, 
I know a bit more about lobster than I do about fish, but. But that's the nice thing about drawing. This is a way to um, just kind of appreciate some of the things in our world. Okay, let's see. Kind of wiping that down, that helps to kind of unify that. I want to break up that edge. I'm going to redefine that a little bit later. All right, I think what I need to do is I need to set this aside. This has become my default. Here's the habit, what I do What I do is like, I tend to get in a habit with regards to my, the, the tool that I'm using and I just stick with it. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna shift to, I'm gonna shift to this harder pencil. Actually, I don't need the extender for this one. Um, let's see. Now I need to add a little bit more precision along that form, I think. Um, I, I need to ori I kind of, I need to bring myself into focus a little bit. And now I, I think I can, if I'm, I'm happy, I think with the overall proportions. So now I can um, start to refine things to a greater degree. Now this is a harder, charcoal pencil and you can see that as I make those marks it's really not doing a whole lot because this stick is so much darker and softer um, and so this is actually a slightly lighter value and I'm using that specifically because I'm trying to sneak up on things a little bit more I want to be a little bit more delicate with my marks um, and as an example it's not doing a whole lot but it's, this is a little bit harder, so I can get a sharper edge if I need to. Um, so I'm almost kind of, it's like I'm kind of probing the form of the fish at this point to um, kind of set myself up for next steps. I'll use my eraser here. And I, I have this angle and I have that size all established. So now I can be focusing on the specific forms and some of those finer observations and so I can observe along this back fin, for example, it's got this kind of interesting form here. It's kind of broken. There's almost like this little spine here on this back fin. And as I come across, now I have the, I have a larger image over here that I can use. I need, to, I need to really get in there and see some of those details so the thumbnail is not serving me as well at this point, that smaller one on the screen below me. So as I'm using the eraser, I'm actually thinking about it as, it's almost like a piece of white charcoal in my mind, like a block of white charcoal. Um, and so I'm kind of rolling it on the side, using the side to get a sharp angle. Kind of dragging it, and then kind of leaning in on the point when I need a little bit more precision. And then I need to, as I'm, as I'm applying some of these kind of details or kind of refining that form a little bit more, I need to kind of, you know, step back a little bit um, in my mind and make sure that I'm, that I'm keeping the, the overall angles correct. Right in here, the fin gets dark. And I need this, there's this dark shape in here that I'm trying to establish. So before I draw that, I'm going to quickly check in where I am, you know, relative to other aspects of the, of the fish. So and I'm intentionally using the side of the pencil to fill in a broader area and it creates a kind of a more naturally appearing mark, shadows, things like that. Kind of reacting to the, the form of the texture here along that fin. And 
And as we as we approach this part of the the fin where it it attaches to the body, um, I want to. I'm observing this thin shadow here, and that's really critical for creating that sense of depth. That's too big right now, and I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally doing that. Um, I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to refine this edge, starting from the, the center of this background form here, that negative space, and work my way up to that edge. Now, now bringing out the eraser to kind of refine this shape here. And I'm, as I'm looking at the higher resolution image, the larger resolution, the larger image here on my left, I'm seeing all of the, the cool texture on the side of the fish, and I'm trying to ignore that at this point. Um, so just trying to stay focused on that form, kind of switching back and forth between thinking about the positive space and the negative space. Now, there, this is an interesting shape here. We, the way we have this negative space here, and then the, this dark line kind of inserts itself in here along the, the tail. And then it kind of fades off into that background. Um, if there are any kind of technical issues, if the picture is losing focus, audio, let me know too, see if I can fix it. One of the challenging things with going live is that it, there's so many parts that can go wrong. So, um, So I'm using the side of the pencil, especially in the background, because um, I'm, it helps me to fill in the area more quickly, and it files it down so I have this nice sharp point when I need to add those details. All right, I'm bringing the eraser here, and now I'm observing this kind of stripe of light along here and it's a little bit sharper on the right side of that form it softens on the inside so I'm kind of feathering it a little bit on the left side of that mark and hopefully that will help to create a little bit of depth now I'm looking at the the, the height of this fin that's something that I didn't really think about and so if this if this fin is correct then this tail fin really should uh, have made it too large here. So I can just cut that back in. Working on that negative space to help actually create the shape of that fin. All right, so the um, the, the, the other thing that I'm kind of keeping in mind right now is knowing that you know these areas that are light right now I can really pull out even more when I add the white charcoal later. I switch back and forth between using the eraser and I'm using this kind of broad flat side. I'm trying to preserve the sharp edge on this chisel tip. shape there. I feel like this has got to come across a little bit more. I think I, like I said, now that I have kind of the larger proportions established, I can, um, I can focus more on the, you know, these, these finer areas. Uh, and then, in, but I, my, my thoughts about these forms though are really no different than the larger form. So I'm still thinking about that 
th these as abstract shapes and still thinking about them as um, you know, contrast between light and dark uh, is just now on a smaller scale. Right? So instead of thinking about the whole fish, now I'm just thinking about this one section, but in that same way. You know, still a collection of abstract shapes that hopefully all come together. Thinking about positive and negative space. So as I work down the edge of this back fin, I might be working on the fin for a little bit, kind of then move to the background. And I can use the eraser to help refine even farther. Um, and but as I you know as I showed in that at the top of the video here with the preparatory drawing, there were issues, there were significant issues with the proportions. Um, and, and, and you may decide that that's, that's totally fine for your drawing. This is part of what distinguishes you as an artist from me or anybody else. Drawing is about making a set of decisions. Artwork is about making decisions and even deciding when to decide and when not to decide becomes a decision. Uh, yeah, let's see. I'm fixating on this tail for some reason. I need to step away from that because it's not serving me. I'll bring out my blending stump, kind of draw with this a little bit. So now I'm going to go through and kind of refine the forms even more. All right. Oh, thank you, Diane. The comments about the, the video. I've been working on getting those the settings correct so that things will look a little bit sharper and more accurate. It's a continual pursuit to <laughs> try to make it work well. So, um, all right. So I'm going to come here. Here, I think I'm going to switch back to the eraser. And again, I'm not thinking about any of the, the patterns, the scales, or anything like that on the fish. I'm just thinking about it as a kind of a three dimensional form. Now I'm, I'm primarily looking at refining the edges of these shapes. rock is there. So there's this very kind of subtle rock back in this, this space over here that's going to be kind of important um, because it breaks up that edge. We have this large mass here that's very dark and that creates a somewhat consistent edge. What helps to break up that edge is actually the variation of light on the back of the fish. As we come along here, now that the fish itself, that portion of the fish stays more consistent with regards to its value. What changes is the background. So there's a relationship shift that's constantly happening, um, but it, it transitions from you know, the, the variation happening on the fish here to the variation happening in the background over here. So with this kneaded eraser, I'm kind of using it very lightly, more to blend at this point. And then as I, as I kind of lock in on the area where I want to lighten up, then I can lean in on it a little bit more. And I don't want this, I don't want that to pop forward too much. Again, it's my primary objective is thinking about this as more as an abstract arrangement of shapes and what those relationships are doing. How are they contributing to the form? Soften that a little bit. Um, it's also important to pay attention to the direction of your marks. We've talked about this a lot in the past. Is um, you know, as I work along here, for example, I'll intentionally use vertical marks here to contrast against the largely horizontal 
um, contour of the fish. And what that does is it tells my brain that if you know this is running vertically, this is a horizontal form, they must not belong together, right? So if I shift my marks here and I run these horizontally, then the viewer might look at that and, and their brain will say, well, if, if this is a horizontal form and those are horizontal marks, they must belong together. And it brings that background forward. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm starting to look at some of these marks. And so we have this contrasting form. Not only is, does this help to break up the value relationships, but it also contrasts against the, the, that gentle slope of the fish's back right there, the head. Um, and so that helps to, again, create a visual separation that helps to push that background back and bring the fish forward. Um, uh, Aaron is asking, can you clean erasers? Or do you just rub them on clean paper? Um, you know, see, I, I will often actually clean an eraser, a rubber eraser with a kneaded eraser, and that can help as well. Or just simply kind of use my, uh, my hands are clean, kind of clean them that way. But I, I think you can just clean them also with soap and water with a rubber eraser. I've never, I don't know as if I've really ever done it or needed to. Um, Often when I'm just using a kneaded eraser to do that, that can be sufficient. So, um, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is along in here, I'm gonna bring the snout forward a little bit more. So what that's gonna, what I'm gonna do is sharpen up that edge. But not as a line. Uh, again, just trying to kind of break it into sections. Uh, and then as I come down in here, there's this really nice light along that snout that I want to kind of putting a mental note in. I'm going to bring a white charcoal in on that to create that nice fine edge. So now I can, um, I can look more critically at the mouth shape. But before I do that, I want to make sure I get the scale correct. Pun intended there. Um, if I have this, if I have this fin kind of locked in and I have this dimension established, then I can subdivide that farther by establishing the shape of the jaw here. So I can look at this and, and ask myself, is this back of the jaw, does that seem generally correct? Use the side of the pencil to create this kind of form there on the lip. Use the side of the pencil here to try to sculpt the that back gill form here. And this is all very subtle, but I think it's important to try to kind of identify that back gill because that that becomes a, a a guide with regards to this the uh, the overall proportions. All right, now I got I want to place the eye, and I'm going to use this fin actually to do that. So if I kind of continue this angle up, I need to see how that orients how that helps to orient myself to the eye. Um, let me see, did I even get that angle correct? I did not. This angle actually comes up more like this. It's going to drop that on there, erase this so it doesn't become more confusing. And then the eye ends up over here somewhere. And I'm just going to drop these forms. I'm intentionally using the side of the pencil to do that so that I don't create hard kind of circular lines that didn't just kind of pop off the form of the fish. I want to I want to make sure that when I draw that eye in there that it's actually serving the form um, and it's not like an element that's just pasted on there. Odd Boyd. Welcome. I've been inspired by Salvador Dali recently currently taking art in college. Awesome. Very cool. Salvador Dali is a really interesting um, artist. I can certainly 
spend a lot of time looking at his work. Uh, so as I'm giving myself a little bit more information about the eye, what I'm looking at are, again, the abstract shapes of light and shadow working away my way around the form and then getting into the eyeball rather than the other way around um, so and intentionally looking for ways in which that eye is not a circle or a sphere um, it's a if you as you look at it more closely in the reference you can actually kind of it's more of a diamond shape than a circle uh, and again i'm kind of saying that out loud because uh, again, I could feel that instinct in me to, to draw just a circle for the eye as a, as a symbol. So I need to kind of step back and not, not rely on that symbol system. Now we have that, that little red dot there on its nose that, again, orienting myself to the angle here, this angled line here, is just slightly above it. So as I'm indicating that, it's just it's, I'm thinking about it more almost like a constellation, just kind of tapping on the page rather than drawing a, a, an explicit line, because um, I don't again I, I don't want any of these forms to pop off the form of the fish. Okay, so this now things are looking a bit wonky. I need to establish more of the mouth. So all of that came about the. Uh, of me kind of getting to this mouth section and realizing I can't really go any farther until I establish some of those other landmarks. Um, so now that I have the eye established, I can use that to help refine the scale proportion of the, of the mouth there. As we come into here, looking at that specific shape, And I can sharpen up the edge of that, that lower jaw. And so as you can see, as I, as I, as I kind of sharpen up that edge, I'm then dragging that back down so that it's, it's not a hard line that I've created there. And it may, as I look at it, it may end up having to bring in a, actually an actual contour line to help um, establish that edge a little bit better. And wipe that down. I'll do some negative drawing by working on that rock up against that edge here. Kind of asking myself if, if there's a sense of continuity there. Um, Oh yeah, the Salvador Dali movies. I don't know if I've ever seen one. I can only imagine. Let's see. Okay, so now as I as I come in under here, I'm observing all of these subtle value shifts. So our so so far to this point, it's really, really thinking about these as kind of general angles and forms. So now I can get in there and observe some of these finer things. And um, I'm kind of bringing that up because as, we, as our objective becomes to create a three-dimensional object, again, the edges are really important. And we've talked about those value relationships as being critical for creating that, that sense of realism, that sense of three-dimensionality to it. Now, along those edges, you really want to observe how the form wraps around those edges. So um, we've talked about contours. A contour is the outer edge of a three-dimensional object, and a contour line is a line that represents that edge. Uh, a cross-contour line are marks that you use on the interior portion of that form that, again, reinforce the three-dimensional quality of that. There are these lines that wrap around there, leading up to that contour edge. And as you, as you observe under here, as I'm looking under here, I'm seeing all of these subtle shifts in light and dark that squish together as it wraps under that, that belly. So we're able to, we're seeing a, quite a bit of information that's all being squished into a tiny portion of the reference image. And so 
And that can sometimes have a big impact on whether or not we, we view this as a three-dimensional object. Um, so I'm just kind of starting to observe some of those things under here. I don't want that yet. So I'm using that blending stump to try to kind of get rid of that line and create, start to create some cross contour marks that help to create that three-dimensional edge, a three-dimensional form. All right, and actually I'm gonna just soften this all together, bring in the eraser. This is where I would be rotating the paper if it were not taped down but I feel like if I didn't have this tape down, you might get a little seasick so just seeing this thing twist and um, kind of spin on the, on, on the camera there. So I'm looking at some of these finer marks here. And I'm observing that, that fin as um, as a kind of a two straight edges rather than one long curve. There's a slight bend there. Um, and now I've got that dark line that's not really helping me right now. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of fill in that background here a little bit to help consume the outline. And that by kind of darkening this a little bit more than what I'm seeing in the reference here, it's going to help that pop a bit more. And then along this edge, this rock back here actually gets dark. That worked out really well in the reference. So how's everybody else's, how are your drawings coming along? Everybody else following along, just observing? So as I come up here now, this gets really kind of tricky in here. It's darker along this edge and then right in here. And then against that background, this is a, this is a really kind of a, an important value switch where that background gets light against that darker edge. And then we go to kind of a darker rock here against that light that's right down there. Anybody new? Anybody watching for the first time? If you are, welcome. We meet every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern to draw together. New subject every week. I'm working on a landscape, or actually a seascape for next week. Um, we did a portrait last week. Kind of changed things up because we're looking to develop our skills and drawing, taking some time because it could be helpful in whatever art you're doing and helpful even if you're if you don't consider yourself an artist or anything it still can be helpful to take some time to just draw I know for me drawing was always a form of meditation more than anything it's just it's where my my brain kind of shut down uh, and I enjoyed that and Uh, and sometimes drawing can be exhausting because there's so many things to think about. So <laughs> um, it's interesting how it plays out that way. All right. I'm kind of, yeah, I, again, shifting to that background, more to clear my head at this point because I'm just going to kind of take a breath, step away from drawing the fish, and then uh, and I'm working on an area that's a little less critical. So just using the blending stump to help kind of smooth things out. But you know, one of the things we talk about a lot in the, sh the show is that you know, you're always contributing to the form. You know, so when we're thinking about you know, whatever material you have in your hand, whatever tool you have, um, it's an opportunity to contribute to the form and refine it farther. Um, so if you have a blending stump, and this is, this is where I, I, I kind of regret not using a blending stump earlier in my career. I avoided it for years and years and years. 
um, because I wasn't thinking about it the right way um, compared to how I, you know, I think about it now. I, I just kind of viewed it as a way to kind of smooth out the bumps in my drawing. But when I, when I realized that it's a mark making tool more than anything, then I realized, boy, it's creating marks that were really challenging to make with just charcoal or just graphite alone. So, um, you know, tools in our relationship to them are a major part in the art making process and um, so much great art has been created when tools are, uh, when you change the way you approach those tools, either use them incorrectly or um, use them correctly for the first time uh, and that the blending stump is definitely one of them. Uh, so as I'm thinking about these rocks, it's, it can be really helpful to again, maintain that sense of abstraction in your work. Thinking about them as just shapes of light and shadow, of, of, of value, a light and dark shape. Um, and if you can, there are th really three main values that you want to identify. Right now, I'm, I'm kind of averaging things out. So you're starting to see shapes for the shadows, um, but then there's also areas like right in here where the light is hitting it. Um, and if you can identify kind of a mid-tone, a light, in a shadow shape, those three can often be enough to create uh, the suggestion of rocks and light striking on them. So I'm, I'm at this point, because of the, the way I'm using the blending stump, I'm kind of losing some of that definition, but I have that in the back of my head that that's where I'm going with all of this. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. So I'm kind of smoothing things out, trying to identify where those rocks are, um, trying to actually change the direction of my marks so that it suggests um, some changes to the, the direction of some of these forms. And, and as such, we're kinda, I'm kind of losing some contrast in terms of light and shadow. So now I can come back in with the, actually I'll come back in with the kneaded eraser. And right in here, I can lift off the light shape a little bit more. This one I'm going to need to bear down a little bit more, so I'll use the, the rubber eraser for this. There's this kind of triangle of light here. And there's a, there's a rock here. Where the light is hitting, but there's a gradation where it's light here and then dark at the top. Kind of a sharper edge along this rock in here. And then it, gradually what happens is that you start to see on your drawing, you start to see those three-dimensional forms emerge. And there's a kind of a tipping point that happens in the drawing where all of a sudden you'll, those abstract shapes that you were establishing click and you see it as a three-dimensional object. And then, then it becomes just easier and easier to, to know where, where, where do I need to pull out a greater highlight or drop a value for a shadow or something like that. Um, so it all stems from, again, that, that sense of abstraction, kind of hoping to get that, again, that click that happens where you start to see these as three-dimensional forms. And then and you, may, you may decide to spend a little less time on the background, or maybe you really want to dig into those rocks a bit more and, and, and be more precise with those. Again, that's going to be kind of up to you. There's no kind of right or wrong with regards to this. Ah, there's this rock right in here in this background that largely parallels this path of this fin. So I'm going to, I'm not, I'm just going to kind of ignore that, right? You know, I, or I, you might even want to change that, kind of change the angle, drop a shadow that runs contrary to this angle, and that helps to create some visual separation and bring that fin forward. Um, so I just, I, um, it's one of those subtle things that as you sit with the subject a bit more, you start to observe and then, and I realized that if I enhance that rock there, it's actually going to work against me, so I need to not do that. So what I'm doing now with the eraser is I'm just dragging across the surface of the rocks where I see it striking, where the light strikes a little bit more than in other areas. And then I can go back in. I'll come back in with the 
Actually, I'll use the big block to establish kind of a shadow core, some of these darker areas in between the rocks. And that helps to bring everything out. And then, so there's there's the kind of the positive and negative aspect to drawing these rocks as well. So as I draw this dark form, it's establishing the edge of this rock. Uh, so that it can be something to, to think about as well as before you make a mark, kind of be clear on what you're establishing there. So this mark actually creates two separate rocks. It's creating the shadow underneath that distant rock, and it's the the shape of this mark defines this foreground rock. And I don't this in the in the reference photo. This rock here is a bit a bit strong, and I might I might diminish that a little bit in the drawing. So now, as I look for the shapes of these darkest shadow parts, that will hopefully bring everything to, to kind of together. But with those rocks, again, if you get the light, you get the midtone, and you get a shadow shape, those three generally are enough to suggest the form of those rocks. And then, of course, you can kind of divide that even more if you need to. But um, that's true with most forms, actually, in the drawing or painting is mid-tone, light, and shadow tone. OK. All right, now back to the fish. Let's see, I'm gonna pull up the, again, the, the kind of the harder charcoal, um, and I can refine this edge here. I gotta contort myself a little bit, work up to that edge, and I think I'm gonna have to end up going darker with it, but I'm looking for really more for kind of that sharper edge and along in here more than anything. You know, this is the point at which I'm observing this shadow that's being cast on the fin here that I didn't really account for, so I can drop that on there. And kind of shifting my the direction of my mark, so I'm observing the, the, any kind of directionality to the marks here kind of changing now, so I'm bringing them up to reinforce the curve of the belly there. And kind of flicking and lifting so I create a soft edge along there. Now, as I come down to this, there's a kind of a dark edge on this fin here. And there's some variation to that line. And I can then switch to that negative space to refine this edge along in here. I'll wrap this value right around that the tip of the fin so I don't end that, that dark value. I don't want to end there. I want to bring that around to help pop that tip of the fin forward. And that gets darker, and when I squint, that edge disappears. That tells me that the value relationships between the background and the fin are largely the same. Um, Oh, JC, uh, Jackie, you're using the black paper but dragged out pastels. Awesome. I can't wait to see that one. Um, and then Brent Desart, uh, I'm glad the, the, the charcoal seems to be working for you. I, I felt like it was appropriate for this 
medium. I'm actually going to be doing a landscape next week, a seascape that's using graphite because I really wanted to capture that kind of silvery quality of the light in the scene. Um, but yeah, there was something about the dramatic quality to the light here that seemed appropriate for working with um, charcoal. So I'm kind of pulling out some of the light, working in the negative space here, lifting up some of the light, sharpening that edge using the eraser, and then there's this cool fin here that has got this kind of wavy edge. Um, so what can be helpful there is to intentionally look for the asymmetrical quality to that form. There can be an instinct sometimes just to create a kind of a, a wavy edge. Um, but if you, if you really try to look at it with the idea of, of finding the asymmetry in that, you can end up creating a more precise mark. Um, so now yeah, that edge feels OK. All right, so I've kind of worked around the contour of the fish, and it seems to be holding up all right. Um, I'm going to switch to a circular mark here to kind of smooth out any sort of the direction of, of the background marks there. Um, and if there's any kind of blotchiness to that edge, what you might try to do is just go do this, go right over the edge, and then um, use your eraser to reestablish it. And then that way, it creates a nice, clear separation. All right, so let's get into let's get into some of those details here. There's that there's that word again. We're going to refine the texture. Details. One of those. I, I don't know why I'm fixating on that word of, of late. For this past month, it's one of those those words that just kind of rattles around in my brain, um, and I think in part because it it can be very specific and vague at the same time um, when it comes to drawing. And I feel like when I when I think about refinement versus detail, it makes more sense to me, um, and because then you can have things that are more refined or less defined. Um, and with, with detail, it's kind of it's one of those things where you kind of know it when you see it. We think we know it, but um, there's so many different degrees that it feels kind of some, somewhat, somewhat challenging. All right, what do I want to do here? I'm going to. This is getting a little bit, a little bit too blotchy. I'm trying to understand the form of the fish a little bit. So I'm trying to just kind of using the kneaded eraser to try to identify that. So the light is strongest right in here. So that suggests a change in the, in the planes of the fish. And so we have, again, this kind of vertical edge here wraps in underneath. And above that light, it kind of wraps up and around. Um, so with the kneaded eraser, it creates kind of a softer edge. And now at this point, what I'm almost doing is kind of creating a kind of a grid that helps me to visualize the, the three-dimensional quality to this. And you know, we talked earlier about you know, so, you know, some artists will create that grid on armature um, before they establish the light and shadow. I've done that backwards here. And I think you're all going to find your own kind of path through that as well. So just using the kneaded eraser, kind of reacting more than really calculating, just looking for shapes of light and shadow, lifting off some of the lighter areas. I'm starting with a really light touch so it blends more than anything, and then kind of lean in as you start to become more confident in the, the placement of it. This is really fine edge along in here. So I'll use my rubber eraser when I need a sharper edge, my kneaded eraser when I need kind of a softer one. Um, and then with this kneaded eraser, you know, if you think about it as though you're drawing with a block or something, you can use pressure to kind of soften or feather some of those edges. 
Um, you can kind of lean in on it a bit more if you need a greater degree of control. And so there, again, I talked about that earlier with the rocks, there comes a point in your drawing where it clicks from it being two-dimensional kind of abstract forms into now a three-dimensional object. So as I'm looking at this in front of me now, I'm seeing it as a three-dimensional fish. So as I'm, as I'm running my, uh, my eraser or my pencil across the page, I'm trying to think about it as though I'm actually you know, it's actually sculpting that three-dimensional form rather than working across a two-dimensional surface, if that makes sense. But sometimes it, it takes a while for that to kind of click over in the brain. Um, and the, the, this blending stump is a great tool for creating texture, especially on in here. So I'm loading this up with charcoal and it's going to be a primary tool that we're going to use to create the pattern um, on, the, on the fish here. So, okay. Let's see. Bad moments ago, I uploaded my two fish drawings on the site. Awesome. I get, look forward to seeing that when this is all done. Um, Uh, Diane B13, just a suggestion, the distance between the fins should be less. The front fin should be longer. So this here, ooh, thank you for pointing that out. So we're looking at this distance here. Yeah, I kind of feel like what, what I did is actually just made this too small. So I might just have to come out a little bit larger with that. And part of it is kind of establishing that that top edge a bit more. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, if anybody has any kind of observations that could be helpful, um, like Diane's comment there, let me know. All right. Actually, what I'm going to do is there's that that stripe along here. I want to indicate all right I think I'm going to switch to the blending stump and start to really refine some of these forms you know so I was using the eraser to lift off some of the lighter marks now I'm going to use the blending stump to add some of the darker and and now we've talked about that before, but I want to reinforce that my, my take on this as we're adding some of the texture here is that it needs to reinforce the form. That's my goal. I'm using that texture to make this feel more three-dimensional um, so that they understand it as that three-dimensional object. If I lose sight of that and now you just create texture for texture's sake, I run the risk of it actually flattening out the drawing. Um, and I, I, I'm talking about that just based on my own prior experiences and I'm having to remind myself that um, and you, it, it, I, th I feel like it's one of those areas, again, where we all have our own association with texture. Um, and th again, that's where it's generally worked against me is when I lose sight of the fact that it's an opportunity to reinforce the form. So just observing some of these fine light lines that kind of catch on the ridges of some of these are uh, the fins here, the gills. And so I'm, I'm using the side of this eraser intentionally so it's more of a block, kind of a, more of that wedge and then using, the, using this edge here when I need a sharper line. Okay, let's see. Liz, I'm happy that your, your fish is turning out well. I can't wait to see it. 
Oh, and I have, I have this eraser I'll be using a little bit later. I'm excited. I just, I just remember that I had it. Um, okay, so uh, kind of getting back to that, that concept of that three-dimensional quality, as I'm, as I'm working along here, my primary goal is to observe the, the kind of the direction of the marks and what changes from this section to that section. You know, there's an irregularity to all of this, and there's no, it's not like a, a repeated stamped pattern across the fish. Um, what happens, uh, what I'm observing is that you, we get these kind of squiggles, right? And as we look at the center of the fish here, where we're looking straight at kind of a wall, essentially, they're a bit more open. As we wrap up, they start to squish together, and I'm just kind of holding in my mind as I do that, if I'm making these marks, I, I want them to then feel like they wrap around th that fish, right? And there's, I feel like there's a, a, a feeling that is uh, helpful to establish sometimes. There's, um, I don't know if I can articulate it more than that, other than like it, it just, how, does, how do those marks feel? Does it feel like they're wrapping around? And, um, and you can start to evaluate that kind of on the spot. Is it working for you, against you? And, um, and so as, I, as I'm doing that, I'm actually thinking about these paths that wrap up along around the fish. I mean, but along that path, I'm letting my marks kind of squiggle and move all around, kind of referencing th those general observations I'm making about the fish here. I'm not going to take the time to really identify each and every specific mark on the side of the fish. I just want to kind of capture the essence of it. Um, again, that, that's kind of driven more just by my natural inclination and the fact that it would take me forever to try to to really map these out precisely and and I don't know as if doing that on camera is going to give you anything additional to work with so um, it comes down to the experience that you want to have if you want to really get in there I mean I there is something really kind of seductive once you start to observe all of those fine details along there. There's something seductive about wanting to get there and get all those little details. Um, so, and right now I'm kind of more thinking about the darker forms of the fish along the, of those patterns there. And we're going to go back in and, and pull out some of the lighter elements as well. There's this cool little kind of spiral right in here that I want to get. Oh, ooh, look at how dark that got. That was just, uh, I wasn't rotating the blending stump as I was going, and so I, it kind of, I came across a deposit of charcoal that is a bit harsher. So as I'm going through, letting it just kind of roll in my fingers. And then the pattern becomes a little bit softer here. Like the, those squiggles are more pronounced up here. Now at this point, what I'm observing is that that texture isn't helping that form. It's actually flattening things out. So I'm going to have to go back in and kind of continue to work on these and keeping an emphasis on that three-dimensional form. Now as the fish wraps around, and we were looking kind of across the side of the fish here, and that changes the direction of the marks a bit. This is one of the, the one of the reasons I like drawing kind of representationally is that I, I have an interest right now of actually doing more abstract work. Um, because one of the things that abstraction can do is it helps you to um, kind of experiment with the medium and, and connect with the medium in a new way, whether it's charcoal or oil paints or watercolor, etc. cetera. Um, but the, the same can happen when working representationally like this. Sometimes when you're confronted by a new texture, a new pattern, a new form, it forces you to work with the material in a new way. And you might discover something new that you could then apply to an abstraction. Um, and so while I, I'm primarily a representational artist, um, I think there can be a lot of value in embracing 
abstraction in the work for various reasons. I don't know if, if that's something that any of you kind of connect with. Um, it can sometimes feel like artists have to pick a lane, but to me that feels a little limiting. Not, you're kind of losing some of the opportunities that each offers. Um, all right, mad moments go. Thank you for the comments. All right, here's something that just coming back to the drawing quickly. I'm looking at this partial portion of the fish, the fish. But what happened is out of my periphery, this mark right here jumped out. Um, because it parallels that form. I'm seeing a kind of a repetition of the form that is not helping me. So what I'm going to do is actually change the direction of this mark here. So then we have a greater degree of contrast there. And that I think will, that will ultimately help a little bit. Okay, I'm uh, bringing back the eraser. Kind of lighten up along in there. So kind of shifting again, thinking about the, the changing in values on the different planes. I'm really not happy with what's happening back in here. Um, so what can I do to help? Let me see if I can, I'm just gonna let this kind of tap on the page because it's distant, so there's not a lot of detail, but I need to make sure that I really understand how the forms kind of wrap around. And then what happens is I think this feels just too too heavy, the tail back there. I need to Slim that up a little bit. Come back in. Sharpen this up a little bit. Ah, I know what I think I need to do now. Okay. I'm going to fix that, I think, once I bring in the, the light charcoal. Uh, I'm going to give that a shot. Okay. Kind of forgot that I can go lighter with this stuff. Again, my, I was calibrating to the gray on the paper. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, here's this, use this accurate eraser. I've got the kind of, a, it comes with different um, sizes of eraser nibs um, and I'm using the, the fine one. And what I'm targeting now is kind of the lighter pattern. Now it's a bit more aggressive. It's pretty loud. I don't know how that's sounding coming through, but um, it's a bit, it's a bit more aggressive. So I'm starting in this area where the light is strongest. Um, and again, kind of trying to imagine the paths that would wrap up around the three-dimensional form here. And I'm not kind of fixating on any one you know, particularly accurate kind of mark here. I'm trying to get a, just a feel for the types of marks and kind of capture the, the quality of them more than um, the specifics. And then there are these kind of, kind of irregular oval-like forms here. And I'm just letting it kind of skip across the surface. Of, and, and again, just thinking about, again, that, that three-dimensional form, those cross contour marks wrapping up around there and then just letting it skip across those, those paths. And there are some places where the pattern seems a bit more, um, again, a higher contrast, a bit more explicit. And, uh, and so I might come back in and sharpen up some of those areas. And, and I'm trying to intentionally like 
make a few marks, move on, and not create a consistent kind of stamping pattern there because it's there's an irregularity that is evident in the fish here. It's not evenly spaced stripes and dots on this thing. Got to move that line down. That's so I kind of lost sight of that path. Um, and so a lot of this is just kind of trusting the marks. Uh, I'm not not trying to fight the material at all. Just letting this roll in my fingers and make these squiggly marks. Stepping back a little bit and see how does that how does that work. Like this is still really strong. I didn't really address that, so I need to... It's weird. It just kind of disappeared in my mind. Kind of stopped seeing it for some reason, and then I just popped out. Sometimes I feel like there's kind of something insidious in our minds that <laughs> prevents us from seeing things that are right in front of us. Uh, that's what I think is awesome about... Uh, awesome about drawing. Um, it helps us confront some the crazy things our brains do. Now the marks here on the, this fin are a little bit different, different quality, so again, just kind of reacting to the abstract quality of them, creating the impression of them rather than being super explicit. And then on here it starts to kind of fold, the, the directions change as they kind of fold and then attach to the, the edge of the fish there. All right. So this is a softer charcoal, a little bit darker mark that I come in in some areas like this. Come in with some fine control there. Um, same within here. Um, uh, Aaron is asking me a question about the tools. I, I don't know as if I put this in here. This is an, it's called an Accurite, A-C-U-R-I-T eraser. So um, this is one that um, that came to me very, via Jerry's Artorama. It's a pretty awesome eraser. And I, you know, I don't use electric erasers a whole lot, but I, I find myself using this more and more. What do I need to do now? Let's see. All right, I'm gonna uh, I, I'm gonna be bringing in the light uh, charcoal in a little bit, but before I do that, I actually want to drop the value down in some of the darkest areas. So I've got my soft charcoal, and now this is an opportunity for me to um, bring additional form and kind of refinement to some areas. And now I'm not bringing that, that dark as dark right up against the edge yet. There may be some areas where I need to do that, but um, I'm not doing that yet because um, it could flatten things out. If anything, I want to have the darkest dark set just in from the edge a little bit to create more of that three-dimensional quality. All right, now I can, this eye here is really dark, so I can lean in on that a little bit more. Uh, same with the mouth here. See how that's playing out. So thinking about positive and negative space con continually. Uh, so I'm missing something here right currently in my drawing. Um, the shape of that lower jaw is such that there's some light here, then it dips into shadow, and then there's a thin light line along that edge. So I'm gonna use my blending stump to drop that shadow in there. It's a little bit more gentle. Um, and then there's, that, there's a variation in value along in here 
I feel like that's working out okay. But right in under here, I can drop in a little bit. There are these little dark marks along in here. It's not a dark line, but there are these little spots that help to sharpen up that edge and pop that out. Um, as I work on this edge here, I'm going to bring in my darker darks right inside here to create a little bit of the suggestion of bounce light along that bottom edge. I'm just focusing a little bit, so I apologize for the silence here, but hope that's all right. Just kind of focusing a little bit more so it's a little bit harder to talk and focus on as we go along. Um, so I'm just kind of stepping back, and as I evaluate this, this shadow core that I'm establishing, uh, I, I didn't want to complete that before I really kind of evaluated how it's, how it's doing. Um, Right in here, I think I can sharpen up. All right, and then we're almost ready for the white, uh, white charcoal. I can kind of indicate that point of contact there within that shadow. Um, now, let's see. I still think there's some edge work that can be done, but I think I, I think I need the white now to help me to see that. All right. All right, thank you everybody. Thank you, Colleen. Um, thank you, Tiffany, I appreciate those. Appreciate the comments, everybody. All right, so look, I got this tiny little dub of <laughs> white charcoal, um, but luckily I have this pencil extender. Um, I can drop that in there. So I'm going to use, this is largely going to help establish details, but I want to be careful to use the tip of the pencil very in, in very select areas. Um, I think I, I'm going to start up here for some reason, and I don't really have, well, I just broke it. I don't really have a... Um, a good reason, I just feel like starting up there. I love the way that's kind of catching that light and I'm kind of, kind of again, kind of sneaking up on it. Um, using the side of the pencil to create these finer edges, but you can kind of, I can let it kind of scrape across the side to um, create some texture and variety. Um, and I'm not, I'm not being super precise with where I'm placing all of these things, so um, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of just capturing the impression of it all at this point. You know, as long as I have the major proportions of the fish established, um, uh, who is it that um, Diane uh, B13 kind of pointed out the, the distance between here, and I may not have, I don't think I've really corrected it. Um, I'm just gonna let it be for now though. Um, I, you know, I think you're. I think you were correct in your observations, but I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna let it, let it sit as it is, um, just so I can continue to move through. And I'm not sure if it's gonna make all that critical, of a difference. Okay, so as I'm working through, I'm thinking about using a, a, a gentle, more like kind of lighter touch, and then leaning in on it when I need it, need to. Um, one of the things that can be useful with this white charcoal is that it, I can kind of sharpen up an edge, and if you use it just very lightly, it kind of scrapes the dark charcoal aside a little bit, create that edge, and so um, you can kind of get into some of those finer areas. But you know, as I as I lighten this area up, I'm I'm trying to be mindful of how it relates to the values in some of those other areas. Um, so it, it's not a matter of just applying white, it's, it's using it to really refine that form. And 
this is where I feel like it can be, this is, I think this, this back end of the tail is really going to come out now. Because when I look at the light, when I squint and look at the light, the light's really striking back in here more. And I was a little bit softer back in here. This is, it's going to feel like a kind of a small nitpicky detail, but sometimes those things can, can really make a big difference. I was a little bit more gentle here than I want to be in here. I want to have a stronger contrast and tone, bring out my brighter brights here to help create that, that three-dimensional form. So as long as I added enough here to create that sense of light, then I can be, I can, I can lean in a, on it a little bit more back here to create some separation between the two. And use the white to kind of sharpen up that, that curve of the fin. Um, All right, thank you, Diane B. Diane B. Thirteen. I love all these comments. Um, and, and again, for those of you who are new, that it, it does become an important part of the show is seeing comments like Diane's that say, "Hey, check out the proportions here. Look at those values there." Um, that's that's how it can be really beneficial to have kind of a, a trusted partner that you can go to to give you the feedback you need in your work. Um, and we talked about that in this show before. Sometimes that trusted partner is not necessarily a family member or friend who hasn't spent a whole lot of time considering art, you know? And it's hard to find the language and say, hey, what do you think of this? Well, sometimes you just don't know. Um, I like it, I don't like it. And sometimes those comments can't be, all, it may not be very helpful, but Comments like Diane's that say, hey, check out the proportions, the distance between the fins, that can be very helpful. Um, and so I welcome those observations. Um, and that's what separates this show from being drawing together. You know, it, it's drawing together, not just sit and watch me draw for a while. Um, all right, so as I come up along this edge, uh, I want to kind of keep in mind what I was just talking about back in here is, is having some variation and control over that contrast. Um, so if anything, I want the lights to be stronger here than up at the edge, but there, I do think I need um, some light up along in here. So I'm gonna start with a lighter touch, a more delicate touch, kind of working from the center of the form up to that edge, kind of refining it a little bit farther. Here it, it seems to be a shadow, and then it comes in along in here a little bit more. And then along the tip of the nose is where it starts to get a little bit stronger. This is a really nice one here. Really like seeing that strip of light. And observing these shapes of light here. So up along that top part of the mouth, the light is along that, that outer contour. Along this lower jaw, the light is strongest inside here. And then it gets a little bit softer in there. So I'm gonna switch back to this overhand grip so I can use the side of the pencil a bit more. That's gonna help me to sharpen it. So in some of these areas where I can be a bit more broad with the marks, it's gonna help me to refine them refine the pencil tip so I can use the tip of the pencil when I need it later. Okay, let's see, I kind of like, like that light there. Now we get the really strong light catching on this white stripe here, so I'm gonna, I can really lean in on this. Kind of starting in the center of that form, working my way to the outer edge of that stripe. trying to observe how it changes along that length so it's not just one consistent stripe the whole way. And then with these fins you get these, you get some light striking in along in here as well. 
So, so, so much kind of refinement comes as a result of this, this white. And if, you're, if you get it in just the right spots, it can suggest so much more detail. I'm kind of creeping out across the, the frame there. I need to come in a little bit, so I'm not just peeking out the window there. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to be kind of selective with it and observing, uh, and then you know, just seeing how things are kind of playing out on the drawing. Um, and I'll just keep refining, keep refining until I find that right balance to say, all right, this is where I can stop. You know, we haven't really talked about that much, but it's a pretty common question is, is how do you know when you're done? Um, the, the, and this is what, what's fascinating is I think it's one of those things that's very highly individual. So I'd love to hear all your feedback. If you have criteria that you use specifically to define when you're done with a painting or a drawing. Um, for me, is generally when it, it might, Am I really contributing anything to the form? So like as I'm adding these lights, it's starting to reinforce a three-dimensional quality and bring this to life. At the point at which I'm making marks and it's no longer contributing, then I, then I step back and say, do I, is this done? Do I really need anything more here? Um, it, and by the same token, there's, there's also a level, the quality kind of, of understanding. Do I feel like I've understood the, the fish? Um, that's, that becomes a criteria that I use as well. Uh, so I, what I was looking back in here is just kind of pushing this light here on the stripe a little bit more to help, again, wrap that around. So creating some contrast along in here, maybe I'll bring in a little bit more light along in here. So as I'm thinking about that stripe, instead of drawing a line this way, I'm observing that path that I erased out, and I'm creating that using these short vertical kind of vibrations there, and that'll help to attach it to the, the kind of the vertical side of the fish there. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, what I'm thinking along in there. Uh, and that, uh, here along that stripe, also don't forget about that, that shadow that, that it falls into. Um, I create a little bit of visual separation here, pulling out some light. How does that look? So these these the fins here are almost are like almost like feathers. There's kind of clumps of them. So like right in here, there's little areas where there's stronger highlights than others. So just looking, trying to observe those. Kind of bounce around the drawing a little bit. Uh, right in here, I think I can sharpen this up. So a really light touch right along in here. Usually using it really more to kind of sculpt that that charcoal a little bit. And right in here I can really just trying to add some directionality to some of those marks there. All right. Where am I at right now? Let's go Let's move over to the eye here. That'll be fun. So still using the overhand grip, I'm going to try to bring in highlights along the structure of the eye. So it's almost like a, a bit of a rivet in a way. There's this ridge along in here. So lights coming in from above is catching this lower lip lid of the eyelid there um, and the upper part of that. And then there's this ridge right along here where it's catching that light too. Oh, there's this really interesting kind of shiny highlight right in here. You know, just using the, the white more to kind of push the material around kind of as a blending stump. Looking, stepping back from it a little bit to see how it's all playing out. I 
think that there's some texture here on the nose that I think is important. So I'm going to try to indicate that right in here. And so just using the side of the pencil here, trying to observe that, that, that curve downward here in the snout. So there's kind of a compound curve kind of quality to that. It curves this way and this way. And I think what could be helpful is to, I'm going to lighten this just a little bit using this. So what, what I'm thinking about is that there, this, this shows the natural tone of the paper. As we come up here, if I allow that white to mix with the charcoal, it's going to create a slightly different temperature um, that can hopefully help kind of push that a little bit more. So what I'm kind of thinking about, and actually I think if I, come in under here with a really fine line. I can sharpen up that. I just want to bring that snout forward a little bit. Um, so then we really feel kind of an, more of an angle across there. The fish is kind of turning, so it's kind of broadside to us, but uh, I want to kind of create some of that, that turn. It's all very subtle, but this is where kind of, kind of it's almost like dialing in a, a radio signal or something like that. We're just kind of tweaking things a little bit here, a little bit there. You know, if I add a little bit of light to the rock, for example, here, what does that do? Um, and if I do that, like right in here, does that help at all? Let me see. Nothing I do here can't be undone. There's a whole rock missing right here, didn't I? It's interesting. Not that I, not that it's ultimately about the rocks, but. I can um, bring in a little bit of light here. So I'm just kind of being selective, observing, stepping back, see what is this doing? Is it helping? I think what I want to do here is actually use this very lightly to refine the negative space in here. There we go. I like that. I like what that's doing there. Okay. Now there's, I think the final things that I can really contribute are some of these kind of lighter spots. And I'm going to, I want to make sure that I still I think I maintain a sense of the overall form. So I need to, before I get in there, I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna lift off some value here, establish some light right in along in this section here. So I'm kind of thinking more about this as being a wash of light on top of, uh, top of the, on top of that texture. And I think it continues all the way across, but I'm kind of being, uh, kind of sneaking up on it. I don't want to be too heavy with it. At this point, it's almost like, you know, what, what don't I need to do <laughs> to it? So using that side of the pencil, I'm just kind of, again, creating a, a bit of a wash over all that texture. So I'm not losing the texture. I'm just kind of softening it and reinforcing that, that three-dimensional form. Um, if I need to, I can always come back in with my, my blending stump and add more of that texture, right? So I can continually refine it. But I, the question is, is like, is that going to help the drawing? Is it going to hurt it? Is it going to help the form of the fish? Or is it going to hurt it? Sometimes you don't know, and when in, when in doubt, I have a bias towards action, right? You know, just do something 
and the worst that could happen is you start over, <laughs> right? Um, but regardless, if you do something and it doesn't work, then you've learned something. Um, if you if you contemplate something and take no action, then you've lost that opportunity to to grow in that in that area. So just go for it. All right, now I'm going to come back in with the um, with this to kind of pull out some of those lighter circles. Um, so one of the things that can be helpful, again, is to remind yourself of the plane that you're working on. This is a vertical plane along in here. And so by, by orienting my um, pencil vertically and kind of thinking about those vertical paths, it helps me to refine those shapes and make shapes that adhere to that vertical edge. Makes me want to go out, go fishing. We got a lot of rivers here in Colorado, or we can catch fish like this. But I am not all that skilled at fishing. <laughs> I'm comically bad at it. So, but it's a fun, fun thing to to challenge myself with. So, all right, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I mean, I I, get, I feel like I, right now at this point I'm just kind of picking away. And I don't know as if I'm really helping show anything that's useful for you. Um, we've, I've had you for two and a quarter hours here, so I think I could probably let you go. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me. It's the highlight of my week, Wednesdays, 3 p.m. Eastern, because we meet to draw together. Uh, check out next week. I'm going to be posting that drawing pretty soon. Uh, in the next day or two, we'll be working on a seascape, trying to capture the kind of mood of a stormy sea. Um, but we shift things up in this, this show here. We had a portrait last week, doing a fish, we've got some landscapes, we're gonna do some architectural elements coming up. So there's uh, a lot of ways that we're gonna could be challenging ourselves because our, our goal is to grow. And so um, try to find subjects that will, will help us do that. Um, I'm always open to ideas from you all. So if you have any ideas what I could bring to the table, what other subjects we could tackle, let me know. Um, Always open to them. So I want to thank you all. We're going to hang out here for a little bit, see if there's any additional questions that come through, comments. Um, I want to thank you all for the positive comments. I, I, you, guys are, you guys are awesome. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, I'm just going to hang out here for a little bit, see if everything comes in. But otherwise, have a great weekend. See you all next Wednesday.